Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. What we're going to talk about today is durable, cheap, DIY aquarium backgrounds and how I do mine. Now, I'm sure we've all done or heard of the painted method and the cleans you get at the store. But today I want to talk about vinyl adhesive backgrounds and show you step by step how to put them on your tank in less than five minutes. Now, about the other methods, we have the painted method, which requires many coats. It's smelly. You need a roller. You need a brush. It's not very durable. It, it has its downsides. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but it has its downsides. The other method are the clings or the things you tape on the back. Now, if you tape it, you usually have a problem. They fall off. And if your tank's up against the wall, you kind of struggling to put that back on. Plus, some people use vegetable oil or Vaseline to get these on their tanks properly. And I don't want to put Vaseline on my tank. And these are kind of, I don't know, anybody can have these. And what happens, at the time, you start to get this look. Which... I don't know, it looks horrible to me. So this this tank I was given, and I haven't replaced the background yet, which I'm about to redo this whole tank. It's a 90 gallon bow front. But this is not something you want to happen, especially if you have multiple tanks. You want to avoid this. And if you like the uniform look, I call it the fish store look, you kind of want them all to look the same, especially if you have a rack system. So. What I'm going to do is show you what I do. I'm going to drop some knowledge. Here are the tools you're going to need to do this job. We have here regular tape measure, metal ruler, we have a heat gun, or you can use a hairdryer. Both of those are optional. Paper towels, of course. A empty bottle, spray bottle filled with water and a little bit of dishwashing detergent, probably two or three drops. Just enough to get see, some bubbles down in there. And we also have a squeegee, pen, and a few sharp razor blades. And now, of course, the most important thing, the vinyl. Now, you'll see on the back of this vinyl. Nope. Let's try it again. See, there's a, there's a grid pattern. Makes it pretty easy to square it off, mark your shapes on the back, rough cut it. Now, this is what happens. There's a backing. You're going to peel the vinyl back from the backing. See? But what I prefer to do, you can see the stickiness of it, which is the big difference about when you put this on. I like to flip it over and I like to peel the back off of the vinyl instead of the vinyl off of the back. It's much easier that way. And then you can just spray the back of the whole thing and you won't have as many problems. Do me a favor. If you watch this video and you find it useful, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and share this video with your friends. So I'm going to grab everything we got here. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to show you how to do a tank. And we're outside. This is 65 gallon tall. I got for $20 off of Facebook today. And since I'm going to put it back on it, I figured I'd show you guys how I do it. So your first step is going to be to wet the back and clean it up nice. Just like you would with any other background. Even a painted background. If there's any spots or anything's on it, just hit it with one of them sharp razor blades. The last thing you want to do is see anything through the glass. That goes for any tank that you put the background on. So, just clean it up nice. This is a used tank, so I'm going to make sure there's nothing in that back rim that's going to get in there. Now, I'm going to liberally wet this, spray it all up, 
the back of the tank with the same soapy water. Go over. I'm going to get my vinyl. Here we go. I'm going to put it on the glass, non-adhesive side. And we're talking non-adhesive side to the glass. So I'm going to have to trim it up a little bit. I like to do mine oversized so I don't have any gaps in the corners. Now, if you're really good at cutting it and you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, just lay it out backwards, upside down on a table. Mark out the size of your tank with the pen. Cut it with the ruler, and you should have an exact fit. But I've done so many of these, I just do it this way. So I'm just going to trim off some of it right here, a little bit of the excess. Notice how the vinyl is not fighting me. It's sticking to the glass, even though I'm working vertically. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the backer off. Now see how it sticks to the glass because we sprayed the back of the glass? It's got a vacuum. It's not falling. That makes it easier for me. So there we go. So now what I have to do, the adhesive side is showing to me now. So I'm going to spray it, get it nice and wet with the soapy water. That way, there we go, get a little bit more. That way when I grab it, and I don't be afraid of this part. It's all wet. It's not going to stick together. And boom, watch how it sucks. See that? Look how it sucked right to the glass. So now, I'm just going to position it. You want to make sure you don't have any, a, gap, a little gap at the bottom, unless you're going bare bottom tank, is it really going to make a difference? But a gap on the sides or a gap on the top, it's going to bother you after a while. So while it's wet, take your time. You can slide it around and get it in position. Now take your squeegee or your credit card. Now, I usually spray the back before I do this and wrap my squeegee with a paper towel or if you have to use a credit card just wrap it with a paper towel that eliminates this the scratching and and the, the tendency if you go too hard to put a tear in it and you just want to squeegee it really good now this is where you want to spend your time see I gotta move it make sure there's no gaps but you want to spend your time with the squeegee because the last thing you want to see with one of these is bubbles from the inside and if you're getting bubbles you don't have enough soap in your water if it's falling off you have too much soap in your water. It's already on there enough now where I can trim it down. Just run a razor blade right down the glass, trim it down. So now I'm going to squeegee a little bit more. And then the only thing I need to do once all the bubbles are out, let it sit for a little while. And I do mean a little while. Unlike a painted tank, which takes a bunch of coats and has to dry in between coats, this is pretty much done. And on a warm day like today, in 15 minutes, I'm ready to bring this guy downstairs. I can grab it. I can do whatever I want to it. And this isn't going to fade either. Like some prints you get. Doesn't matter how long, whether it's in the sunlight or not. It's not going to fade. It's not going to shrink. It's not going to fall off. There, right, I finished trimming it. And boom. I'm done already. That's as easy as it is. Now here it is down in the fish room. Already filled with water. It's about an hour later. And I'm already filling it with water. Yeah, it's a, it's a makeshift top because, like I said, I just got the tank. But I couldn't resist a 65-gallon. But I like that blue. So here's a better look. As you can see, nice blue color. My makeshift uh, filter. Just want to get this tank cycling a little bit. I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. But there's the background. Especially if you're going for the fish store look. If you have racks of tanks and you want uniformity. You want them all to look the same. I would go with this method. Now here. Here's some more examples of tanks that I've done. There's a little bit of algae on the back wall. But... A little bit of algae never killed no one. So, here you go. Take a look at my tanks. Tell me what you think.
Now this one here, I did two thirds of the back because of where this tank is. I can kind of see through on the other side. Now here is an example of me using it on a saltwater tank. This has been on here, I'd say three years now. And salt creep, nothing seems to get to it. So I recommend this, especially if you like the, the solid colors in the background and you want to keep everything uniform and you want durability, this is the way to go. Thank you guys for staying to the end of the video. So I'm gonna let you in on my next video. I'm going to be doing a review on a Tom's product, Mr. Cleaner Aquarium Battery Cleaner. I'm wondering how this works. I've seen it, it says it's rated one of the five, top five, but we'll see. I got my batteries. I'm about to hook it up and videotape how it works. If it's good, if it's bad, if it's somewhere in the middle, I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to tell you the honest truth. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.